Hi beautiful Virgo. Welcome back. This is Mary Ellen coming to you from Moonrise Cottage for your September 2017 Soul Tarot reading. I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> Obviously there's a lot going on. Um, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, uh, I am here on YouTube well, since January, relatively new here, uh, I'm a clairvoyant person. I've had a very, very interesting, what I consider mystical life, twisty life path. And I'm changing my life. And <laughs> Spirit is pushing me already. That's what Spirit has been talking with us about. I'm a Virgo. And things have really been undergoing radical change for us for a while in part because we are an earth sign and we are mutable and with Pluto in Capricorn, the first house of Capricorn that affects our journey as well as the journey of Taurus it affects the entire planet and Spirit says, you know, if you haven't done it, I can't remember if I've said it because I've made so many videos go to the internet and look do some research about what happens or what has happened historically when Pluto has been in the first house of Capricorn. It's truly fascinating, especially giving, given everything that's going on here in the world. So, uh, I have a couple of things, like a little bit of housekeeping always, so let me get through that quick and we'll jump in because I'm excited to see this. Just a reminder for anyone who doesn't know, if you scroll down below the video, YouTube has a little bit of information about when the video was published, etc. In that box, you will see the words, Show More. And if you click on it, it's a link, actually. It opens up the box. Every piece of information that you need about booking a reading, making a payment reservation, the types of readings, the, the pricing, uh, information about uh, news about the channel, there is going to be some live streaming that'll be a subscription service, all that information is there. My email is at the very bottom of that box if you need to be in touch with me. Uh, let's see, so a little bit about the live stream. I'm working on it, I've been promising for, for a couple of months now and here's what I'm finding out, two things are happening. I have a really old computer and it served me just fine in my old life. Not so much <laughs> now that I'm on YouTube. In fact, it's dying. And uh, the hard drive, I'm just praying. I'm literally willing it with my energy in connection with spirit to live long enough to get through the retrograde. Because I don't want to buy a computer in the retrograde <laughs> if I can avoid it. So I am uh, asking for your help. I'm a spirit's been nudging me, and I, you know, I'm a shy Virgo, so I feel a little. I've had some feelings of, I'm not sure I want to do that. But spirit says, you know what? It's step one on the manifesting highway. I talk about it a lot. We're going to be talking about it in the live stream. Stream. Uh, there's going to be a regular group that can come together to talk about that for our own lives and for our dreams about this planet. So Spirit says, you know, be brave, jump out there, put yourself out there, ask for help. So I am in the process of manifesting. I am asking for donations. And I've thought about it and long and hard, and I'm the kind of person that, you know, if you want to share something with me, I really like to give back. So I've decided if anyone who makes a donation of $35 or more, uh, I will automatically give you a, a full 12 month subscription for unlimited access to the live streaming and the videos that are produced as a result of that. So it's a little bit symbiotic. That's the price that I settled on between myself and spirit when I thought about uh, live streaming. With the notion that a small price, if you will, 
is something that most people can afford and that likely will provide me with enough financial assistance to be able to blossom and grow this channel, which is the intention. So any help you can give me, I would truly appreciate it. And uh, as soon as that gets taken care of, then we can start the live stream. My, my sweet old computer just won't support the platforms and etc. So eventually I'm going to make a uh, announcement video about the live streams after we get through all the retrogrades. I am traveling to Ireland in the middle of September. I'll be there for three weeks. I am still, uh, there are a couple of spots open for personal readings, so I'm still taking appointments. If you are there and you want to meet with me and have a reading in person or some kind of a psychic consultation or uh, spirits pushing me to begin to do uh, the healing work that comes through me, I haven't talked about it on this channel at all. That's going to be one of the things that's coming up in the future. So I'm looking forward to that. Make sure you get in touch with me by the 5th of September if you want a reading in person while I'm in the Misty Isles. I think that's it. So Virgo, let's jump in. Last month, if you haven't seen that video, go and watch it. Uh, you've been under, <laughs> Spirit saying, a particular type of scrutiny this year and it's it's funny I've never heard spirits speak this way spirits in the background the chatter that's coming through is spirit has really been had its focus on your change in evolution and you like every other sign you've been stepping into an initiation process in order to help you grow and change and at the beginning of the year uh, there was a lot of turmoil and spirits uh, talking about that in part because of some of the upsetting energy that came through the eclipses even though it was for uh, toward a positive outcome it's a little challenging there was a lot of upheaval you know Virgos we like things to be neat and orderly and predictable etc even though we're highly creative we have a certain process <laughs> And in those times when that process gets pulled out from under us, we feel a little bit unsteady. And last month, uh, here, there was some recollection going on about the kind of death and loss that we came through in order to go through a portal. The death card was here. And uh, to begin to recapture. So there was a review of what has been going on all year and the fact that we were actually standing in a place where we were just sort of thinking about it the king of battle was here and uh, on the spirit line there was discussion about the ways in which we move our energy forward going into the eclipse because we were destined to step deeper into our initiation process and utilize the winds of that change coming from within us to begin the steps of manifesting that which we desire in our own lives in order to use that vibration to contribute to all the beings here, Spirit saying. And it's not, you know, it's interesting because it's not just about human beings. So, spirits chattering in the background, and I've been certainly feeling and experiencing a lot of difficulties, I believe, because of the retrogrades. Oh my gosh. I, you know, <laughs> including my computer, it's been literally groaning, and I've been fearing that it's just going to die. So, right now things are calm. I don't know what happened the last couple days. Today it is the 25th of August. It's just been... I've been feeling like I'm walking on a live wire. There's been so much static and so much electricity and so much intensity. So I don't know if we had a solar flare because of the eclipse, but there was just, it was crazy here. I couldn't, none of my electronic equipment worked. I'm trying really hard to get the videos done and up. Uh, because I'm in the throes of preparation for travel and there are many other things happening. 
I couldn't get anything to work. And I just literally sort of had to stop and pause. Today, when I, this morning, when I sort of reached my wit's end, I thought, you know what? I'm going to throw open all the windows. I'm going to step outside, just breathe for a few minutes, because I've learned enough to know that this too shall pass. And there's a reason. There's always a reason for these things. I stepped outside onto my little deck. The sun was shining. And literally, about 30 feet over my head, I looked. I saw a shadow, and I looked up, and a hawk was flying around the house in a circle, around and around. And it brought a memory to the surface uh, of something that happened long one of my <laughs> one of my many mystical experiences. There was a time, and I was sort of pulled across into this memory. The spirit wants me to talk about it, so forgive me. I'm just going to go with it. There's always a reason. You know, in that moment when the hawk was flying around the house, it was quite low. It was probably about 30 feet around, above my head, and it startled me. I've literally just been talking with one of my subscribers about hawk medicine and uh, how that is considered in some cultures to be a very sacred indicator of feminine energy. So some years back, there was another day when things were really tense. And I opened up the door and I laid down on the couch to take a nap. And there were some hawks that came and they were flying around in a circle around above the meadow. I drifted off to sleep and to make a long story short, I had a very intense dream about communication with the kettle of hawks that was in the meadow. And when I woke up, there was a hawk sitting on the edge of the couch above my head, staring down at me. So um, there's a lot of spiritual um, whew, attempt at communication with the us, Virgo, I believe, in these moments. Because we are mutable, because we are flexible, because of the soft part of our nature, there is something about the way we journey. And so, sitting here on the top, I'm very thrilled to see the guardian of the gateway. So Spirit's going to be talking with us about the eclipse, the gateways, the portals that opened, and the feminine energy that was affecting this journey through the Lion's Gate and the uh, solar eclipse. This is the High Priestess. She holds her intention at her heart chakra and her power. She is the guardian of the gateway. And the full name of the card is the guardian of truth. And Spirit's talking about the purity of the intention that lies within the heart and mind of Virgo. That provides us with some of our challenges as we meet the world, as we walk through our lives. Because of the purity of intention that lives inside of us. So let's see where we're going. So that is, for those of you that don't know, if you're new to the channel, this is the card that um, provides sort of the light and energy to the reading. It's the message from spirit that is going to be discussed. It's a theme card, if you will. So this card in the middle is about the human aspect uh, blended with our spirit intentions for us as individuals, as Virgos, as we go through this next month. And look at that. There's the card. So Spirit is talking about the intense light that became available and caused us to begin to transform through the solar eclipse. When we were able to be in direct communication in this way, That's the courtship of knowledge. You know, it's that moment where you fall, you you know, you have an epiphany, Spirit says, 
and you fall to your knees and you begin to uh, communicate with the angels as part of what this is, is uh, the intention is here and give gifts and become willing. Spirit's talking to me about the initiation card that was uh, reappearing in your reading last month. This is the furthering of that process. And you know, the blue in the ha hair indicates a continuation of transformation toward your destiny. And this is male energy. It's the impulse, the drive, the impetus, if you will, the genesis of this, Spirit says, this type of awareness coming through and inhabiting our being, driving us forward through the end of the year because of all the things that happened at the opening of the portal. So, look, and there we go. Because of this, we have a new foundation. Look at that. A new foundation of skill, and that's what we've been building toward all year in order to be able to really take charge of our existence and not be buffeted so much by the winds of change, Spirit says. And there we are in our workshop. We have the tools we need. We're pretty strong. Again, more beautiful male energy. Creation. Forging from the fire of our passion. There's more work. There's more learning to be done. Okay, it's a number six card. But there's a very solid foundation. We have a tool set that is available to us as we navigate our way through our initiation process. Let's see. And look, again, <laughs> wow, Spirit says, these three things are a triad. This is the dreamer of growth. Look at that. Planted very deep, a major arcana card, planted very deeply into the mystical realm. The ability to be present on the earth in this mystical way, hold, the holder of all this knowledge. And Spirit's talking in the background about the sacred sites um, that we find all over the world that reflect this type of knowing. It's about being here while being... Uh, so Spirit's talking about... Sorry, there's a lot of chatter going on. Spirit is talking about, <laughs> if I can encapsulate it, this sacred kind of knowing that lives inside of us now as we continue through our journey in a way, Spirit says, that is louder and more clear than it has ever been. And we are a vessel for this. And part of our journey is going to be learning to uh, utilize it, to wield it, and to form it. Oh, I see. Okay, so... <laughs> It's these two things together, all right? They support each other. This is the type of work we're doing. Here on the earth, having come to a certain stable uh, foundation and skill set in order to do this work, this is about manifesting dreams. In the traditional tarot, it would be the star card. So it's about intuition and astral travel, dreaming, your path in this realm from source energy deep out in the universe. That's really beautiful and that's why this is here. Okay, So the beautiful goddess who is supported by the Divine Mother who shepherds souls on their journeys met us, spiritually speaking, at the gateway when these portals open and Spirit's talking to me about the Lion's Gate and I think that's why this color and all this light is here because we had, did go through the portal and became prepared to stand at the gateway for the solar eclipse and yeah look at that fantastic alright so that's the third major arcana card on the table already Again, beautiful male energy.
turning the spiral with clear intention and ability, moving life forward deep in order to let go of that which does not serve us and to be released from it, Spirit says. This is about a very intentional, intense form of change. The full name of this card is the Changer of Truth. And Spirit says, in this moment, when we have this foundation and we come through, uh, Spirit saying, post-eclipse season, as we walk forward, this is going to be our new reality. We have left many things behind. And Spirit is saying, what's coming through to me is that this is uh, the illustrating for us as Virgos the pathway that we follow because of this. Because we've been on this journey of taking up our strength and becoming who we are, now we come fully into this moment of change, able to take it forward and do with it what is intended. It's very beautiful. All right? So there's a new intention. That's what Spirit's talking about. There are new intentions going forward. We have been in a process of change. The shift is solidifying. Ah, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Spirit says, the world is catching up with us. We have been on this wheel of change for the entire year because of the massive upheaval that has been going on for Virgo, a reflection of the Capricorn-Plutonian journey. It's been very intense for me. I don't know about you guys, but I, I've done a lot of readings with Virgos, and I see that uh, theme, that notion, coming through a lot. So let's see what's at the bridge. There, that's what I was just talking about. Okay, so this is about... Losing your way and being mired, Spirit says, even though really it's about being stuck to this golden ball. And the, I won't tell the long story, but these two individuals wandered into this castle. And they got stuck to the riches that were in this golden bowl. They reached out to touch it. And they got stuck to it. And it was on this marble pedestal. They could not get out. They couldn't join the river of life. And, you know, they had to sort of realize the futility of it and how this brings no satisfaction. And so, you know, like me, a lot of the other Virgos I know are leaving this old life behind. And that is why this is the bridge. Having come through this change, having changed the last step on your human journey this month, it's driving you forward to finally continue this process of releasing that which does not serve you in order to have your spirit journey. I love it. All right, let me see. What's here? Look. Uh, there we go. So that's the dialogue of art. Spirit's talking, it's really interesting. Spirit is talking a lot in the background about our mutable nature as earth signs. So there's, Spirit says, this is Virgo and Spirit. It's the joining of male and female energy very clearly. And there's the Lionsgate portal, the full moon eclipse. We were joining hand in hand, coming through this eclipse in a very deep, meditative, silent awareness, Spirit is saying. That is actually Merlin and his sister. They were very devoted to each other in this lifetime. And she built him this sacred dwelling in order that he could look out and, and accept into the tower all the information that was meant to flow into him as he continued his work, his change. It's interesting. So, given all the cards that are on the table, one of the things that's coming through from Spirit is you know, it's this male impulse that's changing. And the female impulse accompanies it. Because without that, 
the male impulse cannot manifest. And, you know, whether you're a man or a woman, each of us have these aspects inside of ourselves. And they are communicating without words. And they have a knowingness now. Because the Tower of Inspiration and this river of knowledge that flows into them certainly activated their purpose in their lifetime. And Spirit saying that is what we as Virgos are experiencing. This information is coming into our beings. That process began at the beginning of the year and has been solidified by these two eclipses that show up represented here so much, so deeply, and the change that was promised for all of humanity. There's something about change for the male archetype coming into its sacred ability with focus and clarity now. That's what Spirit is saying. In order to change our truth and release us from that which no longer serves us, Spirit's talking about the challenges that Virgos have. See this line? Being in the world. You know, and there's chatter coming through about being in the world but not of the world. And actually that comes through in the rune readings as well. So we are turning deep like everybody has done. But you know, we're Virgos. We want to work. We want to achieve. We want to bring order from chaos. And that is what brings us to the sacred dialogue that we have with ourselves and what we have with spirit about our nature and about our deep desires going forward. So let's see what's here. And look. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, spirit. The new life that we have been seeking toward and reaching toward, spirit says. This is the revelation of knowledge. It is nearly a completion point. That's a warrior. Again, you know, male energy. Really interesting. Shift and change in the way male energy. Spirit's talking about the way that it is formed now here in the earth. And its ability to change. This is a story about a warrior who lived a long time. He fought many battles, and in the last battle, he was the sole survivor. And he lived into a great age. And rather than go through an actual death process, what he did was he reincarnated while he was alive. And he began to shapeshift. And, you know, if you have any doubts about the effects of the eclipse on us, Virgo, look at that. We have, Spirit's telling me, we have reached our destination in order to be able to take the next steps that are meant for us as sacred initiates. And we were being prepared for that going into the eclipse. That's why the energy was so intense in August. We really did shapeshift. There's a knowing. Our intentions, the purity of our intentions have become manifest. That's what's coming through from spirit. And you know, this elk, if you look at the animal medicine cards, it is about stamina for a long journey. Isn't that interesting? It's really beautiful. And you know, water, having come across, I've had a lot of dreams. <laughs> Someday I'll tell all the stories about all the dreams that I've had. But you know, this was one of them. That, you know, on this human journey, we have to traverse these giant bodies of water in order to shift and change and grow. The first time I saw this card, it blew my mind. So I thought, oh my God, I've had a dream about that. And here it is. In the same line with the sacred dreamer, having a courtship with this revelation of knowledge through this dialogue of art with spirit. We, you know, our ability to know and to see has increased. And that is why the High Priestess has been waiting for us, met us, 
at the gateway of these, a portal of these eclipses that just passed. And, oh, okay. <laughs> that, I believe, was the outcome card last month sitting right here. Promising, it was an augury. Okay, this, this is a prophecy. The augury of art. Look at that. And you know what? It's about manifesting. Spirit's really poking me, sort of in the shoulder, um, to, to activate me to really sort of talk about the manifesting thing. And, and I think, between you and me, kind of making my computer finally reach a point where I had to start actively talking about my need to manifest something and asking for your, your uh, participation, etc., etc. So it's interesting to see this. You see what she's doing? That is exactly what she's doing. And again, another body of water, life force energy, love, tranquility, creation. Manifesting your desires through the turning of your, the spiral of your own life. Look at that. Spirit wants me to show you this. <laughs> See that? That's pretty amazing. It is the change. Oops, you can't see it. It's the change that brings the augury. People often are afraid when they see the tower card, and I always say, don't, don't worry about that. That's exactly what you want. Let's take care of business and get down to it. That's how I always feel about this. So, all right, let's look at the outcome card. Look, all right, so, you know, Virgo, I just sort of feel like Spirit's saying, we have manifested our desire about coming into our strength through attending to our spiritual awareness and then the knowledge of ourselves. And that's why this is here on our knees, in front of, in awe of that which is arising from within us that causes us to be able to meet this moment at the gateway with a new foundation, given all the traveling and the journeys that we've been on, Spirit says. Changing our inner truth, certainly that has been true for me, and letting go of the things that don't serve us. Vanishing them in a very powerful way. Very powerful. With lightning bolt precision, Spirit says. And, you know, okay, so, <laughs> lots of stuff to talk about here. I'll be brief, because we're already at 30 minutes. So, this is the Empower of Will. It's a major arcana card. That is the sacred goddess of victory. And look, it's Leo. Okay? We've talked about this, I think. Because she has showed up in the reading before. Spirit says, pay attention to the way your energy is running through your life. And if you look back, you'll be able to trace the pattern. And understand the divinatory nature of the journey you've been on as a sacred initiate preparing for the portal to open because that is your moment of success you've crossed over there was a, a woman in the ancient Celt Celtic days who was a warrior goddess she was a leader and she led an insurrection against the Romans interestingly enough and there she carries the soul Spirit is saying, you've been successful. You've empowered yourself and your soul to journey toward wholeness in order to be prepared for this next phase of our development here on earth. Imbued with your strength and with all this sacred knowledge about yourself and about how you connect with spirit and what the purpose of that is. So let's draw from the bag of runes and see what Spirit has to say about this. You know, it's interesting because it's a very quiet moment in a certain way. There's an enormous amount of power here. Through the balancing of this male impetus and this female energy standing here to meet and receive it, it's a very powerful reading. Male energy cannot do the work of its manifestation without being received by the female archetype. So, in some ways this feels very quiet to me, 
but it is about quiet power. That's what Spirit is saying. And that's why the star card is here. Look at that, deep across the universe. Amazing. Okay. Spirit, please give us any bit of information that may help us on our way. As we walk into September, settling in, Spirit says, to this new reality, to just be able to walk, take it up and walk in it. On forward towards the end of the year, a Spirit's talking about the winter solstice, interestingly enough. Okay. But that's Pratana. That is the rune of growth. That's incredibly beautiful. And this is the dreamer of growth. I'm going to put it right there. And I'll read to you right from the book. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> the cars are getting all caught up in my sleeves. All right, Burkana. This is about growth and rebirth. Okay. This is one of the cycle rooms. Burkana represents a form of fertility that fosters growth, both symbolically pardon me, and actually. The growth may occur in affairs of the world, in family matters, in the relationship of the self, to the self, capital S, and to the divine. This is a rune that leads to blossoming and ripening. Burkana is concerned with the flow of beings into their new forms. Isn't this beautiful? I love how Spirit chooses these cards for us. Oh my goodness. Burkana's action is gentle, penetrating, and pervasive. What is called for here is to consider your issues with care and awareness. First, disperse your resistance and then accomplish the work. Spirit says that's what this is about. That's why it's the bridge card. For this to happen, your will must be clear and controlled and your motives correct. Any dark corner should be cleansed. This must be carried out diligently and sometimes with expert help. Modesty, patience, fairness, and generosity are called for here. Once resistance is dispersed and rectification carried out and seen to hold firm, then through steadfast and right attitude, the blossoming can occur. There we go, Virgo. Beautiful. Really beautiful. And you know, part of what's going on in the background um, is... This is our moment, you know, these days of late summer, the days of the harvest, and that's the message. Spirit is harvesting our ability to walk in this way through the energy released at the eclipse, releasing us into this new growth through this rectification of the energy here on earth. Spirit says, summoning the power of our spiritual reality. So Virgo, thank you so much. I'm going to do my best. Send me some sparks of energy. <laughs> I'm working on manifesting that computer so that I can take it with me and hopefully, maybe, do a quick live stream uh, from some of the sacred sites in Ireland. I'm very excited. Uh, so... I look forward to seeing you in October. Have a wonderful month. And be, Spirit says, be clear and be easy with yourself. Take good care of yourself and allow yourself to be at your set point, which is to just revel in these moments. Thank you, Virgo.